Thanks for joining us for the segment. You will recall that on 7th Gen January, we marked one year of the Okufado led administration with um, some insightful interviews. We spoke to a CDD and then some think tanks. We spoke to some uh, political scientists and, of course, the economists. And, and we look at one year in office of Nanado Danko Kufado as president. But uh, it's also a year since he met the media. And in that media encounter, a number of issues were raised. And from the perspective of the media, we also need to undertake our own analysis based on the observations that we as individuals, as media houses, as um, whether uh, lecturers or pe perhaps teachers of the profession, really have noticed as far as governance, uh, the management of the economy is concerned. And um, who better uh, to help us do the discussion than two of uh, the, or two or some of the most illustrious people in the profession. I have Zakaria Tanko Musa, who is a legal practitioner, but also teaches with the Ghana Journalism, uh, Ghana Institute of Journalism. And uh, thanks for joining me, Zakaria. Most grateful. And then also Elvis Dako is a um, great journalist, as usual, um, a great award winner, travels around, has seen many perspectives on the African continent and elsewhere, but he's the editor of the Finer newspaper, and we have him here. You can always uh, catch him on Facebook, and uh, <laughs> he has Elvis Dako, simply as his name there. He has some strong views many of the times when you get to analyze his post. I'm always there to watch his post many of the times. Um, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Thank you. And so uh, uh, it, it, it's been one year on, on, on the part of the economy. You have the, the professors, the experts always gauging what the macroeconomic indicators are. The, the, the gurus in political science will always be having their own perspective. But as media, we need to make sure we put our own observations on the front banner. And today is our day. Um, you say that one year in your own observation. Um, just summarily, what would you say it has been, if you want to describe it, Elvis? Well, I would say for the, from the media point of view and how the government has performed so far, I would say it's not bad, it's good. We've seen some improvements in what is happening. We think that, for me, from my perspective, I think that um, though a lot of the things that they've said are policy initiatives and they are yet to fully begin implementation of some of these things. As an individual, I believe that for this country to go forward, some of those things are very critical for us as a nation to deal with. But in the midst of everything, it's not all 100% good. There are critical challenges in some of the things that they intend to do or are doing, which I believe that with further analysis, some of these issues may need further reviews or may, some of them may probably completely total scrapping of some of the issues <laughs> and others need to be improved and strengthened for it to move and be stronger. So I think that for me as a person, generally as a democratic country, apart from one or two things that I say nearly tarnish the image of the government in terms of this foot soldiers mm. who think that they are being left behind yeah. and decided to take the laws into their own hands and obviously because they are party members the way we think they should be dealt with they have not been dealt with I think those are some well, of we'll, the we'll begin to deal with some of those individuals but your own summary description of how one year has been uh, from your own perspective for the Kufado led government? Well, thank you very much. Um, the accounts have a saying that uh, Grobeswa, if you are not part, uh, to it, uh, the success of a day is foreshadowed by its morning. Now, when you, you look at um, the sort of things that this government promised in its manifesto and the things it has done within one year, you would say that, yes, I mean, they haven't been able to do everything, and you don't expect them to do everything within one year, but some of the landmark things that they said they would do, they have either started some of them, or they have demonstrated their willingness and enthusiasm to do them. So from that perspective, you would say that, well, you can see things really shaping up to uh, 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 play up uh, correctly, but as Elvis rightly pointed out, I mean, it is not uh, really all rousy. We have 
had instances where things have happened that leaves much to be desired and what had been done about it. And um, you have to give the government some credit uh, for at least trying to do something about those concerns that were raised. But we still have some residual uh, tendencies of that here and there. Now, one of my worry, which I have seen with almost all our government, is still the lack of humility to admit that we say we'll do A, B, C, D, we haven't been able to do it, forgive us, because we have realized that things are not the way they were when <laughs> we were in opposition. It's still lacking in our politics, and I think the earlier we start doing that, the better. Because when you do that, you make the, mem the public really ride on with you, because then they now realize that you're doing a very honest uh, politics. You but mean that lack of admission? That lack of admission, okay. and it's something that happens in almost all, all right. but, but Elvis, let's start with, even before that first interaction, um, even before the government of Nanado Dankwe Kufuado will be inaugurated, he will even be formally sworn in as president. We had violent takeovers of um, toilets, uh, stations, uh, and, and the most popular of them all were tow boots across the country. It was one of the initial concerns of journalists when they met him. Um, what would you say is your own observation over the period as far as dealing with that as a government? Well, as I said earlier, it's a negative for the government because the people who were involved in those things claimed they are members and supporters of the party in which has won elections. So for me, that one is a negative. And the, for me, my concern critical is why will young people who want to go out there and be running after things that they shouldn't be running after? The, 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 the fact that you know that this is a tool or this is a public toilet or this is that is not yours. Even if it belongs to the state, you are not a state. The state is everybody in Ghana. So why would you run after <laughs> it? And the one fundamental issue is that you see these young people and realize that it is because they are jobless. They are jobless and think that they've been in opposition with their party for the past eight years and their party has come to power. So they must also benefit from their party being in power. So, for instance, in a place like Sherman and Nima, I'm told the very people who were running, the, who went there to go and seize the places, were there during President Kufu's first time. And therefore, when NDC won, these people came and sacked them and said their government is in power. So they also made up that when our government come, we'll come back for where we were before our government lost power. So once their government won, but say, hey, my friend, you just go because when your government won, you came to take it from. But that is where I have a problem. Is that how do we ensure that in a democracy, it is the rule of law? So how do we ensure that these things, the laws apply to the utmost best when these things happen? We shouldn't always be afraid and say because they are our members or they claim to be our members, if something that has been done is against the law, the approach to addressing those things we really do not apply the law to its fullest, but we think that they should be treated in a, a certain way because they belong to the government of the day. And this has been with us in this fourth republic. And it is one of the things I am looking at for that. We will be able to nail it that in the next elections or in the next change of government, we will not witness the situation where people can say that because it's my government in power, I am going to take over this or take over that. They should understand that it is not lawful. And it all depends on how the agencies that are supposed to apply our laws do it and make us believe that nobody is telling them not to do this or not to do that. So for me, that is the issue. It's not about, it has happened, and it has happened throughout the Fourth Republic. But should it happen, should there be a change of government in the future? That is where I think that this government has a responsibility to put in place the structures and the situation where if there is a change of government, we will not witness that. That is where I think as a journalist my attention is. And, and uh, in, your, in your domain, especially in your field of uh, endeavor and expertise, is, is, is the fact that we know the constitution is the guiding principle by which um, we daily manage our lives in our country. At the end of the day, everybody needs to be given the opportunity to showcase the talents that they have. They need to be protected based on the rights that they enshrine in the Constitution. 
how do we have the laws of our country um, structured in such a way that it makes sure there's a, there's a continuum in governance, in such a way that that refrain of winner takes all doesn't come into the front burner when we have such transitions? Well, thank you. Um, the law, we have so many laws in Ghana, and if we are to adhere to the laws of the country strictly uh, as it should be, um, you cannot rule out the fact that you would have people going out of the line. That is human nature. But the laws would be there to deal with those people. And when the law deals with those people, it serves as a deterrent to people. But when it comes to this very thorny issue of winner takes all, you see this is one of the interesting things about our policy, politics. Anytime we're leading up to an election, you hear people talking about this issue about winner takes all, let's do something about it. And yet, after election, we all go to sleep. Nobody talks about it anymore. But that is one of the fundamental problems that we have. Because yes, when you look at the way our uh, 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 governance structure is, it gives so much power to the government or the party in, 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 in power. And because it gives so much power to the president, which, who would be the uh, who, uh, 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 leader of a particular political party, it, it turns out that almost all the appointees would be <coughs> sympathizers in one way or the other of that particular uh, government. So those who are not sharing that ideology or something, irrespective of what expertise they have, they are not really brought into the fold to help. Now, there are even instances where when you want to tap the expertise of your opponent, quote and unquote, he or she would feel comfortable accepting that because as soon as he or she accepts that appointment, his own party people will start looking at him in a different context. Oh, okay. Does that mean that he was Did doing break. something with, the pers the, with that party? You know? So we need to really define our politics in a way that demonstrates that we have really made progress. How we get there? We will get there if there is the will and the enthusiasm. Is that the will? The will for me, it's not there. Uh. It's only uh, a fanciful and we only pay in lip service. And that's why, you see, I don't think it's excusable at all what happened when it comes to going to take over tow boots and toilet. Because this is not the first time we have witnessed this. We saw that when the NDC took over. We saw that when the MPP took over. And it's going to continue because nothing concretely has been done. And those who perpetuated that have not been dealt with according to what the law says they should be dealt with. So they feel emboldened. They know that tomorrow they can do it, hide behind politics. Because we have some, uh, uh, crime is crime. We, don't, we shouldn't have political crime and petty crime or whatever. Crime is crime. If you commit a crime, let the law deal with the person. If there is any mitigation, let the person put forward who his or his mitigation is. But people shouldn't be hiding behind political power and authority and get away with things. When you do that, it demonstrates that your politics or your governance structure still leaves much to be desired. And one of the dominant questions in, in the first... Uh, meeting with the president or between the president and journalists on the other hand was the fact that how was the president going to fulfill his free SHS policy and uh, of course it was budgeted in that much budget that was read by Ken Oferiata the finance minister it's it's it, it's been one of the positives as far as the MPP administration led by Nanado Danko Kufado has been for the last one year oh yeah for the free SHS policy I think for somebody like me personally, I have been an advocate of a free secondary school education for Ghanaians because uh, I've had experience myself and I've seen people who are unable to go to that level because the, their parents are unable to support them. And looking at the current situation in Ghana, if you look at it critically, the most important or difficult aspect of education in Ghana is secondary school. Why do I say that? If you drop out, if you are unable to continue education after uh, G junior high school, and let's say you are 40 or 45, and now you are be able to maybe hustle yourself and get some small money, to so say I'm going to sit in the classroom in secondary school, to finish secondary school and go to tertiary level, it's like a very difficult task. But then if you are able to complete secondary school, and you have been able to pass, and even don't have the money to go to the tertiary level, even if you are 50 years and you get married, you know that as for the tertiary level, nobody even looks at your age that you are 50 or 60, so why are you now coming to school? It's easy for you to make a progress to uh, uh, tertiary level once you have 
that sort of education. That's the sort of education. So for me, I've always said that if the secondary is free, and if I'm 50 years before I'm able to raise money, I can go to tertiary level. I just moved to tertiary level to go to school. So I, I, I have always advocated for the fact that we need a free secondary education. And I'm happy that this government, despite the difficult economic challenges they came to meet, they did not say that we want to wait before we implement it. And they took the bull by their horn and implemented that policy. I can tell you that despite all the challenges, you talk to a lot of people in Ghana, tell them, this thing has come at the right time. Because you talk to people, it's like, oh, you go to a lot of schools and the kind of money you'll be asked to pay even outside the actual fees you are supposed to pay. That's designated by the Ghana no, it's, it's, it's so amazing. But today, because the government says no school should charge anybody any fees simply because government has taken charge. All the <coughs> so, uh, fees that were even not part of the proof is where now you don't see them in most schools. And for most parents, they are so happy that at least if I can get one, one thing of Milo, uh, uh, an Oloka of Gary for my child and pay the transportation, my child is going to school. So for me, that is the critical issue. So for me, I think the government did very well. The challenges, I believe strongly that by the next three, four years, these challenges will be over. People raise the issue, why don't we wait and do this and do that? I said, at any level that you implement a policy, challenges will come. It's about how determined you are to address the challenges that will make the policy successful. So for me, we shouldn't be so much focused about the on the challenges. Our major focus should be that the thing has come, government is spending money on it. How do we make it work? Uh, one of my critical problems I've even made aware to giving Ministry of Education is that, look, now that the numbers are going up, if we look at the abysmal performance at SHS when uh, the results are released anytime, once we are implementing free SHS, we are not putting them through for them to go and fail. So we should also be looking at the quality issue that by the time these people get their final and write their exams, we can see the pass rate at least going up by maybe 60 or 70 percent rather than the 30 percent we have uh, witnessed in the past three, four years. Zakaria, then the question will be, once a policy has been implemented, uh, have, do we have the media following through, making sure that for the various categories of audiences we have, we tell them the successes, but also the teething problems. Taking the issues to the duty bearers who are, let's say, the ministers, the appointees, to know that these are the problems that step by step the media has noticed and so needed to be addressed as far as this policy initiative is concerned. That have is, we seen that? That is one of the challenges we have with media all over the world, but especially in our part of the world, I see that a lot. Now, News has value. Now, one of the values of news is when something is new or something is unusual and it involves personalities. So anytime the president or any of his appointees do something, it becomes news. Anytime something unusual is done, it becomes new. Now, it is unusual in our part of the world for you to start something like a free SHS. So it is understandable why the media jumped onto that and they were reporting it. But what we don't do, and we don't do it very well at all, is the fact that continuity is also another news value. So yes, NHS has come. We didn't expect it to come. People were skeptical. People thought, there is no way they're going to do this. It's just one of those uh, campaign promises. Then, bam, the president, like you said, took the bull by the horn, said, I'm going to do it, and he did it. There were challenges. The opposition were knocking down uh, uh, some of these issues. They were constantly talking about it. The government, understandably, would want to be very defensive because they don't want to be seen uh, to have started something that is porous. So what should the media do? The media was supposed to be their eye and ear of the public that would come and say, okay, hang on, these two political parties are talking about this. This is saying this, this is saying that. Let's do the fact checking. The fact checking wasn't properly done to see whether, let's go beyond these two political parties and let the public know what exactly the issues are. Then now the thing has been rolled out. We have not really continuously monitored to look at, yes, those challenges. Are they avoidable challenges? If they are avoidable challenges, why couldn't it have been avoided? Fine, we are in the situation now. How do we prevent it from coming? Because remember, next year, we're going to have another batch coming to add to uh, the, 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 current the, the, the current stream. And that is going to put pressure 
in terms of the resources that is, will be needed to sustain it. And that's also going to put pressure on the facilities. That's also going to put pressure on the people who are supposed to teach them. All these questions have not been asked. We get carried away by the political rhetorics. And that's my worry. And not until we start doing that, the politician will always get away with that because when the NDC says this, the MPP would come and respond. And we just keep talking about those issues. And we allow the main issues that the public want to know to get, away, uh, 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 to get buried down in the sand. And I think we should move away from that. Let's start continuously monitoring. We can't all be doing that. But you could always say, for instance, if you take Joy FM, for instance, you can give somebody that task of monitoring this policy that government has actually ro rolled out. Continuously keep on asking, keep on looking at what have they done. Look at the milestones that they've set for themselves. Have they achieved it? Why haven't they achieved it? What are they going to do that? Continuously start hammering and asking that questions. When politicians realize that we are doing that, they'll stop taking us for granted. And uh, supervising all these policies will be the ministers and their deputies. And uh, if you look, if you have a casual look at the media and what the reportage has been, uh, well, it's been either positive or negative against the number of ministers and the appointment. And it, it's, it's, it's dominated discussions over the last 12 months. Um, what will be your perspective? Um, do we have too many of them, 110? And then beyond that, we have various um, parastatals, uh, SOEs, and the appointment, DCs, etc. Are we having a bloated government? Have we had a bloated government? Has it been effective? Uh, what should the media have done in making sure that um, we monitored how these ministers and the other appointees performed? So when the president unraveled these ministerial positions and all those things, and the issue was raised that you have too many uh, uh, ministers, the justification was that because of the enormity, of the challenges we're coming to face. That's why we did that. Now, what the media ought to do was to say, OK, now, you justified this number of ministers or ministries with the fact that you're, they're coming to do some specific work. Have they done it? Have we seen anything different from when we didn't have this number of ministers? And we could look at it. We could, I mean, so look at the previous government, the first year of the previous government, with the number of ministers they had. What were they able to achieve? Have you been able to achieve that, or have you gone beyond that? If you haven't gone beyond that, then you cannot convince me. You haven't justified why you needed that. And unfortunately, some of the ministries that were created, and we said we were going to do, that was created because we want to see something being done differently. Those were some of the ministries that had really uh, did things that was frankly embarrassing and disgraceful. I mean, you talk about the ministry where uh, the special issue about um, budget. The, the special initiative. initiative and all those things. So frankly, they really haven't seen the justification for having those ministries. Early stages yet, you might say that. But if you want to be skeptical, you will say we could have done away with that. Mm. Could we have done better with a smaller number? Well, I think the president himself admitted that his government is large. So that is not the issue. But his caveat is that he believes the tax is enormous. He needs the people to get his work done. As we are all analyzing, we said the first year of any government is not an easy task, especially when we come to meet a situation that they came to meet in terms of the economy. We are seeing certain results. The question is, can we do an assessment to say these results are because of the number of ministers? Mm -hmm. Then we can say, okay, it is justified or not justified. Obviously, it is possible the president didn't reach out for me, could last one or two ministries. But I, I have the view that I don't think that the large number of ministers is what is key to deliver results. But the reason I, at the point I will support it, is that we have the public service that for some time now has become highly politicized and inefficient in service delivery. So if you want to deliver results and you now want to spend time to change attitudes and work behavior for those same people to be able to do their job, probably if you are not careful, you may not be able to get your results in the four years term you have. So probably you want more ministries, get people and tax them and say, I want you to change work behavior within this number of months at the place and make sure that my results that I want from me, I get it. Last week, Joe Gatti had a chance to send 14 workers of the ministry home for coming to work late because he realizes that he needs to get the job done and people must come to work on time to get the job done. So if the people are not coming to work on time to get a job, I must let them know that you either come to work on but time Elvis, or you don't go. In the same so, perspective, we're told that there have been duplication of roles. But has the, the media been able to analyze 
the it's, it's all about and... how you look at it. That's what I'm saying. If you say, for instance, we have a trade ministry, we have GIPC, then we now have a Ministry of Business Development. The question is, what is the duplication of duty? What are their specific roles are they supposed to do? The Ministry of Business is being taxed to say, try and find out startups, build them up and make them new business. Mm -hmm. The question is, is that also something that Ministry of Trade or GIPC is already doing? If we can establish that, okay, Ministry of Trade or GIPC is already doing that, then we can say it's a duplication of duty. But if it is not a focus of the two institutions earlier, and the president thinks because of the large number of unemployment in the country, creating businesses for them to be successful is a, a way of addressing the unemployment. So I need <laughs> an institution that somebody will say, okay, then that can be a department under a ministry of trade or something. But all depends upon the person who is rolling out the of vision course. and what vision he wants to achieve. So as I said, for me, my belief is that what we should be asking is taking each of these ministries that have been created, what are the results? Can we measure them with that in the one year this ministry has done ABC and therefore has justified its existence? If we do the analysis and think that this ministry, we can't point to clear cut things that they have done and therefore cannot justify, then we can make a case for the president and say, look, this ministry, we don't think that they have done anything justifiable to remain a full ministry. Even if you want to probably see which one would you say that perhaps uh, maybe shouldn't have existed at all? For me, I, seriously, if I said I have taken time to, to do that, I will not deceive you. One thing, a ministry like Agri, which I commend them so much, was that the minister, once he took office, said, I am doing plenty for food and jobs. He did a document, and as a journalist, I have a copy. And when I look at it, I say, this is a minister I will support any time, any day, because he's able to tell me that I want to do this in the first year, actually put a budget to it, and has made it public for the media to have it. So if at the end of the first year I'm looking at planting for food and jobs, I want to say, ah, what were the results based on what he has done? Then I can judge about how many ministries have done that for me to be able to have a background to which I'm going to judge them. Mm. But, but you wanted to make a comment. No, that's the point I was making earlier on that. When you create the ministry specifically to execute a particular task, we need to know what the remit is, define what those uh, parameters are. Then we would know on what basis or how we are going to assess that particular ministry. Now that is where I fault the media. When the president was announcing that and the president was openly saying, I have chosen this person because he or she has expertise in this, that, 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 and I think he or she would come and do this. What we didn't follow up was to ask, what specifically are they going to do? Within what period are they going to do that? Then we can sit back one year, six months down the line, and say, have they <laughs> been able to do that? Now, we're not doing that because, see, I had a chat with the Minister of Business Development. Uh -huh. I was surprised about what he's been doing. Yeah. The media is not following up on these things. I was really, really, really um, uh, 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 enthused about it. Because one of the things we have is that startups, we, we do start a lot of businesses, but they don't go anywhere. They collapse. And there are reasons for that, because the governance structure of the businesses and all those things are lacking. So what he is doing is trying to build the capacity of these businesses and infusing resources into that. So for a ministry like that, you could say that, well, yes, we are seeing the results. But nobody knows about this. Because, because the, media the media has been focusing on up. the They're normal focusing on the fancy form Things the and normal all political and so far, that, we are not helping. They but are mentoring 6,000 businesses mm. and they are doing regional workshop wherever you are. I know where you're coming from with the information that you have. That's you okay. understand That's it. okay, Elvis. So let's but do the analysis <laughs> based on the information. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, most ministries, as you said, they are not, my problem with the ministry, they are not forthcoming with information on what really they are doing at the moment. So we are asking questions. But, but, but Zakaria, would you say then that if you take a case really look at the focus of the media, how critical it was uh, on the John Mahama led administration. The media is, has been too soft on the Kufado led administration. Well, see. Oh, it's too early. It's not too early and it could be too early. But you see, see, you, we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. Uh, political parties have their own ideologies and relationships with the media. And it's an open secret that the NDC government's relationship with the media is not as comfortable or as good. bright or good or effective, effective as the NDC so government. So media strategies. So it's not that the, <laughs> the media is soft, 
but they, they tend to tolerate certain things and give this government the benefit of the doubt. Whereas if it was the NDC, they wouldn't give them the benefit. Why is that? But that's why I'm saying that it has antecedents. Remember the NDC metamorphosis from the PNDC, and during that PNDC era, there was this perception, rightly or wrongly, that uh, oh, they were anti-media and all those things. So no, that residual, no, no condoning free that, that speech. residual okay. thing has, and the NDC hadn't effectively succeeded in getting itself off that. I mean. Some of them had tried to do that and all those things, but there's still some room for improvement. So because of that, you see that. But it is not true that the media had been really soft on that. Look at a lot of the scandals that have been uh, uh, that were Tell me e some. exposed. I mean, the boss issue, for instance, this uh, cash for uh, a, a seed thing. All these things are things that the media uh, uh, brought up. But the question is, if it had happened in the previous previous government, the choice of words, the way it would be described, the aggression with which it would be pursued, would it have been <laughs> the same? That is why you could say that probably it might be different, but that is where the NDC has a responsibility now to up their game, and that is where the responsibility lies on the opposition now to put it up there and then force the media, because once you put it out there and it becomes news, they cannot ignore it. Then it means that if we have a media that's uh, in bed with government, then we're... we're There's no media no, in bed with government. Bed, uh, that is a wrong perception, mm -hmm. depending upon who is doing the analysis. Yeah. Okay? Every government in its first year all, always have good support from the media. Check the Kufu administration. The first year, the media was good with him. The Mills Check. administration, I'm Mills sure. had a good first year. Mills, after second year, going, before if you check the records, Mahama didn't have a good first year because he was a vice president of Mills, and it's a continuing government. So the pressure that is already building from the first term of the NDC government continue into Mahama's first term as president because it's assumed that it's the same NDC and you're only a continuing government. So there's no need for us to say we are going to give you any briefing space because it's not, you are not new in government. So Mahama's situation cannot be compared to Mills or Kufo or Akufuado situation. So nobody should be saying that the media is in bed with government because the media will begin to criticize you from second, third year, fourth year. And that was happening at Mills administration. And then the NDC continued. So when Mahama candidate changed, the perception of that because Mahama is now a new president, probably the media should have been softer on him in his first year. But that didn't happen because Mahama is seen as continuing a government of NDC, which he was a vice president of. So for me, that pressure that builds up for every government, once that government loses power, the, every, the nation says, okay, this is a new government. Let's see what they say they will do. How are they going to do it? So for the first year, you see announcement of policy initiatives. We are going to do this. We are going to do that. But then when they enter the second year, it was okay. Enough of the announcement of we are going to do this. Now let's see what is being done. So for anybody to say so, that the Akupa administration has this, so, and as Tango has said, it's true that NDC has, look, it is under the Mahama that a minister of state decided to boycott multimedia well, because of a certain reportage about mm. her. The minister of openly said, I am boycotting this media. So if you have appointees who can say, I am boycotting me a particular media because I'm not satisfied with their output, how do you expect the media to have that wonderful relationship and you are having with another government? In, into, into that the is the point. Of, uh, that is the point. But let's go to Maxwell Agbaba because we're having various perspectives about... Um, the encounter that the president, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, is going to have with journalists is just a year, a year in government, and also a year of great analysis and exposés by the media and reportage. But would want also to know what the ordinary Ghanaian thinks. And Maxwell Agbagba is roaming somewhere around the Kwame Nkrumah interchange area. Good morning to you, Maxwell. Good morning to you, um, Roland. Um, and uh, uh, and who have you been speaking to? Somebody who sells shoes, or somebody who is just a passerby, maybe um, on the road to a corporate um, office, or, or who have you been speaking to at all? Uh, well, um, Roland, uh, we got here some uh, minutes ago, and we've been interacting with people from you know different backgrounds here. Um, some of them on their way to. Um, yeah, various offices. We've been finding out from them the kind of questions that they would want uh, journalists to um, ask President Ikufuado when they meet him later uh, uh, today. Uh, a lot of them that we spoke to earlier um, talked about corruption. Uh, some of them also said they actually 
would want to ask more questions yeah. about it's the special prosecutor, uh, Martin Abidu. Some of them also said if they had opportunity, they would ask the president about the um, 800,000 Ghana cities website for the Ministry of Special Development. Uh, I mean, a, a special initiative and all those things. There are a lot of questions coming up as we go around interacting with people at the bus stop. But currently here, uh, we have um, about four or five people who are seated, who also have their questions that is say uh, this question should be critical and should guide journalists who would have the rare opportunity of meeting President Tukufuad and asking them. So they're going to direct their questions using this medium. So if you're a journalist who would have that rare opportunity of meeting the President, maybe you can take a cue and then direct this you know, question, relay this question to the President when you have um, that opportunity. Let me start off with you. Chairman, you're welcome to join us. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm. You see, yeah, yeah, this is a essential for one of our own young president to put for the Asia and now we'll be sano in Semro. In Sembe, in Pote, Pan, and Dawakuma, so I'll be saying, we'll be sa president to put for the Asia. I'm going to say, 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 the school had to say, Nana, Nana, your president, Nana. I'm so woke school from class one, I could see baby or what do you certificate in the Kutan and no one Kutan. Me who's overdue president, you know, you can't change someone's son's certificate. Now, me mean, just as I bump you over, I said, I was saying, I said, driving lances. Yes, you school near a coy and no one yako. Me, my coy could do F. Says, and yes, yes, and 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 Om yen san kusku om penufono certificate in omu kusku ansa ne bibe ye MP no omasa sam certificate na na ane yen de yen driver side de bia yen san driver side lance. One 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 se monsa sam lance. Se aba ayi se yebasi se lance se na ko yasi aba mbi aba bia waye. Ayi de bia le new driver side lance se no asam na oka na na. Because me interested in certain things, minister, uh, minister of education, only me can say, was a certificate because we do all honour, no see certain things. Me present central for one on the corner, one minister, president. Me say, I don't think a driver's license is ten billion. I'm my yes, I'm say, no minister, minister of education. Only can say, I'm just a certificate. Well, interesting argument uh, he's raising here. Well, he says uh, that. He has been working for some time as a driver, and his certificate is his driving license. But he really does not understand why um, usually they get, I mean, um, some information being put out there that they should change their driver's license. But in this case, he's speaking directly um, to the new DVLA driving license. He says um, his driver's license is actually his certificate. And he cannot fathom why, uh, I mean, the ministers who are in the various offices, even the president, is not told to change his, uh, I mean, his certificate. The one that he went to the university, the one that he got after attending the university, the president is not asked to change it after a particular time. He clearly has issues uh, with a new DVLA license, and he wants journalists to um, ask the president that when they encounter him uh, today. Now, DVLA kids now, uh, we... Kids, na na, omo tono, eni di na, eno omo ni omo asembi a omo. The omo say first aid was on. First aid, first year omo chaso, but eno omo ni omo asembi. So omo chaso nti ene na omo minti minu omo asembi a. Okay. Ebi. And the second one is ni patrol. Patrol ya di. Sisi a patrol. Eno say okay patrol minu minu say ya koto free baby. And obi in koto adi a thousand. And from a day eighty pesos. Minu minu say. Na yansu yano koto dize no. Twenty. Okay. Okay. Um, since he talked about the DVLA driver's license, I was asking him whether he has no issues uh, with the DVLA first aid boss. You know, it became a big issue. He says um, since uh, that uh, uh, that uh, 
the sale of the DVL infested bus, you know, has been halted. He really does not have any comment on that. I asked him um, also, he says that his second issue would be about the price of, you know, petrol. He says uh, the price keeps going up and they really do not make any money um, when the petrol keeps increasing. And he wants uh, the president to either reduce the cost of the fuel or maybe increase the cost of transportation fares for them so they can at least break even or make um, some profits. Thank you very much. Now, let me find out from uh, Nana Bachowuzu Asambena Upesen Central for Omu Shia President Kufu Asambena Upesen Biso. Asambena Upesen Biso, I say, critically, MP Na Yukumo Ebuakwano. Oh, Ebuakwa Sabt, MP JB Dankwa. JB Dankwa. I check. Wokumu Kran Sana, MPP Banti Tabna. MPP band the media minimum say oh MPP for bad here. What they say oh lawyers cry na bribia just say. Obet me this and cry for nothing. Ya kum cry for ya my MPP abba. Ama abba. Ama yes you dead dead report report be cry here now. Obet me kipu. Eh wa ni demu ma. A cry for be fa. Ah what one what she? Yeah don't she? Ah ne yere ne masu cry for so. Yesu an wosu. Ah ye 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 ente she. Nubi say mu say. E dey pen ne wo akwani wu ni mu cry enti na ye enti mu this and some ne dano. When Bisa plan, one chair one son of you. And one of them, hey. Bisa, Bisa president, don't you? What's that? Who you? I obey him to me in this assembly. I am president. Need me also. I am so sad. I am really crying. I am not even the MPP. I am not even the MPP. Now, sabi sabi. In Kofia, we come and we take one of them. We are wada. We are in the assembly. 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 We are in if you have to back, I report to I out them. Okay. And Jay say. Well, he has issues uh, with a trial of uh, uh, the perpetrator of that crime, the one who allegedly um, killed the member of parliament for Ibuakwa South, uh, JB um, Dankwa. He says that um, it happened before the NPP came into power, and the new patriotic party has actually touted, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, the many lawyers, of famous lawyers um, within their ranks. So he thought that with the NPP coming into power, they would be able to um, prosecute or ensure speedy trial or bring justice to this. But he says that is not happening, and he wants the president to ensure that justice is served um, quickly. Um, the president is central for no. Moshe, Ghana is central for no. Omo, Omo Abomodeni. If you see, a bright John Mahama was no. Na pressure that John Mahama should be on the central for Omo Bodechi. But see, I say in central for journalists, I say Omo at Siya Kodak Akra. We share in central for no. Omo ye Juma say Omo de niama niama inside anya papa ya kusua Omo no no no. Omo di utu juana say we share Omo nyadi. Oh, we share Omo nyadi. If you say say Omo nam any two two and some answer na Omo di ayi 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 atu ga. Di we share Omo nyadi. Um, I was asking him whether um, he thinks the media is actually playing its watchdog role because um, we've had arguments that uh, the media has actually gone soft on President Tekufuado. Uh, when President Mama was in office, uh, people said the media uh, was too harsh on him. Now I'm asking him whether he thinks the media has gone soft on President Tekufuado. Um, he says that no, he thinks they are still keeping and doing their watchdog role. Is he Bibia Kosumao? Sana mende mihuno, sana mende mihuno. Okay. Bantu sisi sasa, insenzi ya fano mungu kushia president ikufuado mo. Insen, insen ben sana upesa hobo bisha ikufuado. Oh, mende mimi ni ame pesa insenzi ya fano bisha na na kufuado mese. Yawa hai yajuma yangu yano ma bisi edangwe si di si ho. Sedna yao mu di bisi ho nusu, aji asasi bebre. Asasi na idhi yenu sana sisi ya sisi zamu si dani si hano chesa yangu adepreku na ekoso wa sabi yao nenzo sisi tamna na asasi na dhana yeye sio jumani mifisi 
government ni nya fa so fi ye ho because ka bia e betu bia no omo gi no ema ticket so because of omo be ye we na amaya luzu kasa and ka se se e ba ha na be ye juma because assassin ye den enye enso ma ye ti mi pese mi bi sa se sa de we no ma ye si ha no fa so be na government no onye fi ho ana se de na e koso wo sa bia ade na o ma ye de si ha um, well, he wants um, journalists who would meet the president today to actually find out um, the use of this structure right behind us. Um, it is, um, I mean, it's kind of like um, a garden um, sort of um, uh, that, that has been put up here. I mean, if you go to the compound, um, there is, um, I mean, there are fountains there. Usually, um, I mean, it usually beautifies the capital when you're passing through in the evening. You hear music playing in the background. Um, in fact, when uh, President Mahama came here to commission the um, interchange here, I mean, uh, we saw the pop and pageantry that characterized that uh, commissioning. He says he really does not see the need of this facility that has been um, put here, this mini park that has been put here right behind um, this bus terminal. He thinks that it is a white elephant and it's not playing any useful role in our society currently. He thinks um, that, I mean, in the past where they had some trotros um, operating from that place, using that place as a bus terminal, they have some AME people coming around to take uh, monies um, from them. But that is not happening um, currently, and he thinks that the structure here is actually a white elephant. But the person may be someone said. Well, so Maxwell Akbok, we're getting all excited about that conversation. And from the perspective of the ordinary man, the questions that need to be asked. And that's where we transition to social media and we go to our Facebook page because we put the question there. We know that the journalists and uh, alongside the great journalists of the multimedia group are all going to meet the president. So we, we said, what questions do you want the president to answer? And, um, well, of course, we had it with the hashtag AM show. We had about uh, reached to over 7,700 people, uh, but we had some of those responses. Uh, Mohammed uh, Bupua says, I have no question but to commend him for the good work he's doing. That's good. Um, oh, but Emmanuel Balang says, I'll ask him three questions. W what was his administration's idea of extending IMF deal after making noise when Mahama led administration extended? Uh, still, most of the youth are are not employed and they promise us jobs after takeover and uh, when will university graduates who have gone through professional teacher training skill be posted to teach as a concern please uh, let's go up uh, set the champ um they should ask him relevant questions no 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 your dress is nice what did you eat this morning your shoe is beautiful uh, there's too much lawlessness in the country the increments of fuel day and night Ghanaians is there better than this i'm not uh, this I'm not aware government uh, and yes I think that uh, um, um, Elvis and Zachariah are all noticing that well I guess it, it will be imperative and that's from Francis Adi uh, that those selected media person invited ask relevant question okay uh, not sycophantic ones you said and this one from King James says my question is why are security personnel dying in his regime okay uh, Nana Jan Nicola, I want him to scratch some of the new ministries created. Created hardly do we see their relevance again. When will he do a ministerial reshuffle? We can answer that, but we'll ask him. Uh, Moses Wumpuni, uh, just ask him that since October he has not paid, uh, he has not paid um, ne n allowances for nursing training colleges. Uh, here they are with huge semester school fees. Okay, Walanyo Akwitia says, uh, in fact, the people of Akwitia consider did well for voting when people, but it seems the, the business that the Akwitia environs, okay, that's Galamse, right? Let's go up, let's go up, let's go up, let's go up. In, uh, I'm Nigeria, but uh, that's Adamu Kabiru. What I want to say is that the man has uh, been trying, so let's uh, praise him. Uh, what's the president's stand on homosexuality? Well, we know his position. Uh, he should give us the size of the government, especially the number of presidential staff, and that's from Yusuf Muba. Mubarak, Mubarak Muri. Okay, so but now let's come to the studio and transition. Elvis, what should be our critical questions today? Critical questions today for the president? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are so many critical questions because in a country where we have so many problems, <laughs> everything is for the government to solve. So right. for me, I believe that we have so many problems in this country that there should be so many critical questions to the government to answer. Of First them. of all, mm -hmm. we talk about our debt as a country. Where are we now 
and in the next, by the time his administration leaves office, what do we expect of the country's debt? I ask this because... Are you worried? As, as, I'm very worried because last year, government of Ghana budgeted almost 14 billion Ghana cities to pay interest on our debts. This year, we are budgeting the same amount to pay interest on our debt. Meanwhile, capital expenditure, which is what actually moves the country, is just about 6.5 billion this year. So the money you need to grow the country is just about half of the money you need to only pay interest on your, your, your loans. So for me, that is critical issue we need to look at, critically, to look at it so that we can see how to fix this debt, put it in the perspective where we can have more money for capital expenditure so that the economy that we want to grow can grow. Two, I believe that critical question about fuel prices. Last year, we had about 19% increase in price of fuel. Fuel price affect everybody in Ghana, and including food prices and everything. So I will want to ask the president, if I was there or anybody should have the president, mm -hmm. this year, the global conditions are indicating that crude oil prices are likely to continue to go up. Are we going to see fuel prices going up because we're in a deregulated regime? Or will government consider scrapping some of the taxes, especially the 15% uh, uh, VAT, which is a, a tax on tax, which is the most critical issue that most analysts, if we take up, can really give us a briefing space? What's the president's position on that? Because so long as we don't reduce the taxes and the global prices go up, for the market people, they will continue to increase price and government will not have a choice. So, but you are just here saying that we need the revenue. Yes, yeah, we need the revenue, <laughs> yeah, but at the, same that, time, that, that yeah, at the same time... That is a dichotomy. At the same time, once you need the revenue yeah. at the same time, what if you take the revenue and the people of the country are That's paying those revenue. kind of exorbitant fuel prices, it comes back to hurt them, yeah. okay? And then critically, the job creation issue. The Ghana today, the most important problem in Ghana today, I think, is joblessness. Not free SHS, fantastic ideas. By obviously, you do but agree, it's not a short-term issue, is it? It's not a short-term issue. That's why I will want to know how we're going to do it. The one district, one factory. I want to ask the president, specifically, what is the role of government in that project? What is government offering in that project? That's not because clear. we say it is PPP, but we don't know <laughs> what exactly the itemized thing government is offering and what the private sector will do in that project. So, it is critical because I want us to be sure in our mind. We have put $35 million in Commander Sugar Factory. It's lying there not working. I don't want a situation where we are not told what exactly government is doing. By the time we get to know, government funds have gone into this project. And if they fail, it means that our taxpayers' money are gone. Already we have Maslock is already dispending. The new one, the, the year or years that turned into NAIP or something like the NAIP. And um, those are critical issues because people want to follow up. For example, Abbas uh, Amogobo from Afinso says, um, uh, well, issues about promises of reducing tariffs, mm -hmm. uh, reducing fuel prices, etc. Uh, those were major campaign issues. They were major campaign but, issues. But we saw increments. People <laughs> believe them. <laughs> but people have to be realistic about some of these issues. Some of these things we know the world over. It's not, and that's why I'm saying that we need to start having very honest politics in this country. Yeah, I mean, you could say that and that would bring you to power. But when you come to power, you would now be, st the, the thing will be staring you in the face. And that's when So from you, what should be the question? For that me, you see, uh, one, of, one thing I would beg our journalists when they go there, Please, this is not the time to go and commend. And yeah, you, there is room for commendation. But you see, uh, 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 I remember I was watching a video, and a professor came to a class. Now, when he came to the class, uh, he wrote two, two, two plus one, uh, <laughs> two plus one. Then he wrote, he got the right answer. Two plus this, he got almost about eleven answers right, and then he got one wrong. And then the class was, Ugh. and they said, why? Because they said you got this wrong. He said, but why I got all this right, you haven't commended me. Just this one thing that I got wrong, you are 
talking about it. That is the nature of human beings. We want, we, because you don't We're want, yeah, we, you don't want to make the person feel complacent. So yes, they might have done something good, but really what you need to do is to be asking the real question. And for me, we need to be focusing on th three main thematic areas for me, education, health, and economy. Because when you get these three areas right, almost everything would come into place. But let's take you a year ago and look at some of the questions and the interactions that took place when the president met journalists in 2017. And I remember during the campaign, yourself and the vice president expressed worry about the level of debt that Ghana was incurring. And among other things, you said that because of the mismanagement, we were having to borrow and then we had enough internal resources and therefore we should block the loopholes. Permit me to give you some figures. In March this year, we went for a 1 billion Ghana CD three-year bond. In April, a 2.25 billion dollar bond, which translates to 10.25 billion CDs was announced. In the same month, we announced a 2.4 billion dollar bond to clear legacy debts in the energy sector, translates that to 12 billion CDs. Last week, we were told there's a 17.4 billion CD bond being sought for Q3, putting all the figures together in Ghana CDs, that's about 40 billion CDs if all these bonds go through by Q3. The last time I checked, our GDP was about 80 billion CDs. If within the first three, first quarter, I mean first year, we're already borrowing up to half of our GDP, where are the internal resources? How, many, how much resources have we generated internally? Why are we still borrowing this much? Um, Mr. President, Election after election, I witnessed desperate and frustrated people, citizens, we are citizenry, who want to go and exercise their votes. Um, indeed, we have people that travel to their polling stations and their names are not in the book. I know that there is the national identification system going on. Is there anything in the process? and? Before I go on, you are known to be a reformist, so I believe that this is possible under your watch. Is there anything in the national identification system that will allow people to vote from wherever they are so that they don't have to travel the length and breadth of our country to go and exercise their votes? Indeed, it's a desperate situation, and uh, I think that we have to look at that. Um, is there anything that you have in the process? Mr. President, for some time now, Morocco has been pushing for the de-recognition of the Saudi Arab Democratic Republic. Would your government bow to Moroccan pressure? And is your government in any way involved in the move to admit a colonial power to ECOWAS? Prior to coming to office, uh, a lot of your critics and admirers alike construed you to be, quote unquote, a very wild person. And now coming to office, um, a very good admirer of yours and a very good supporter of the MPP in London called Gorazo sent me a message that that wild nature known about the president, Nana Abidan Kwekufado, seemed to have fizzled out and you seem to have been tamed by the presidency. Have you been tamed, Mr. President? Well, so, well, may he so rest in peace, the late um, Kaba. Yeah. All right, but a number of questions were asked. Debt, you raised it, and then corruption. We also had issues as far as we we're concerned on how to make sure that uh, we rein in the issues about expenditure. Yeah, I mean, you see, the problem we have is that we know that you need to generate resources. Mm -hmm for you to be able to spend. If you don't generate, then you're going to spend something that you haven't really generated. But when you look at it, I mean, the, the governments, almost all of them have been paying leave service disease f to this fundamental issue, widening the tax net. We've been talking about it. That phrase, I've heard it, it yeah, since. Uh, we will do something about widening the tax net. And it's, it's, nobody seems to be doing that. And if we are lacking in terms of how to do that, let's look at good practices somewhere and then see how. But I don't think this is rocket science. It's just that, I mean, uh, because 
Uh, well, uh, we're told that the Ghana Post GPS and having a national ID will rope everybody under one umbrella. So at the end of the day, you could be identified and you could be tagged. That is a glittering... Even if you're, if you're a mason. That is what is re uh, 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 termed in propaganda as glittering generality. You just okay. come and just throw things out there and you don't tell us how it is going to resolve that particular problem. How? How is it going to do that? Just having that uh, 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 software there, and yes, yes, people have. But what mechanisms are you going to put in place practically? And how are you going to let the various ministries and departments work together to do this? And this is what the problem is. The ministries don't work together. So you have maybe a, a, a ministry of finance doing their own thing, another ministry doing its own thing, and nobody seems to be talking to each other. And not until we widen the tax net so that everybody is contributing and not really overburdening the few people who are contributing in terms of resources, we'll continue well, to have this problem. Thing. Campaign, when I come, there's, there's corruption uh, in NDC. John Mahama is, uh, is stealing or leading tax to steal the country's monies, etc. So people were expecting a miracle, of course. We've had the appointment of the special prosecutor, but could something had been done before even that announcement of the special prosecutor? Well, I, 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 I'm one person who thinks that a lot could have been done by the AG's department even before. Because even the special prosecutor was recommended by the Attorney General before the President appointed because it's supposed to be a department or unit under the AG's office in the law. So for me, personally, that's the view I hold. But talking to people and lawyers and others, look, prosecution can only be successful when you have enough evidence. Well organized evidence because in court it's not going to say because you said it the court is going to convict the person you must prove beyond reasonable doubt so the government explanation is that they are doing everything possible to make sure that they got the kind of evidence on cases and therefore if they decide that they go to court with a particular case they are sure of what winning and i think that argument at the point even though i was one of the people who said that they should have started earlier at a point I think it makes sense because they give examples of we should consider the number of people who were hauled before court under President Mills. Mm. But it turns out that a lot of the cases go to court and the people are able to win over the AG's department in court. So the main reason we think that people should go to court to pay for it, we didn't achieve it even though they, were going to, they went to court, they end up winning the cases. So for the government argument that they believe that they rather have to do a lot of work behind the doors, mm -hmm. get the kind of information they need, so that if they decide that this case can be prosecuted and they go to court, it is because they are sure that they are going to secure conviction. That's where they are going. And I think that that makes a lot of sense. So I will buy into that, but I will want to say that okay. the appointment of the special prosecutor has come, and I think that this year to next year, we can actually measure the corruption fight based on what number okay. of kids that On a scale to, to uh, 0 to 10, how would you rate the government? You see, that's one of the things I don't like doing okay. because for so me, for me, that is, let me, let me, so for me, that is more, that, that introduces a celebrity sort of way <laughs> of analyzing a very serious issue. But on the issue of corruption, uh, for me, My time is uh, yeah, on the issue of corruption, for me, the government hasn't really demonstrated enough in this first year because most of the time they don't even, when it comes to one of its own, they don't allow the institutions that are supposed to do it to but do it's it. it's always with the politicians. And, and, and uh, that is, but for me, that's my zero disappointment. To ten. <laughs> you want me to read the government? Yeah, yeah read. Well, I will read the government 70% because I'm okay. doing it purely based on Seven what they are able to achieve in the area of the economy, how they are able to yes. put the their macro, The track. macro indicators yeah, I think have that, been... Yeah, I'll give them 70% so far. Have been awesome. Okay, so that would be uh, kudos to, not only to generally the government, but the finance minister has been able to put... Um, Bank of Ghana, everybody in check. So we're, we're doing good work as a country. But um, that's where we know that the Kufado uh, led administration, uh, led by the man himself, Nana Dankwe Kufado, uh, will be meeting the, the, the media this morning. We'll bring you live coverage of the event. Uh, but I've had in the studio Zakari Tanku Musa, who is a legal practitioner, but also a lecturer um, of journalism and other media studies I'm with a gun. Yeah, true. A journalist too. Uh, Ghana Institute of uh, Journalism. Thanks for joining me, um, Charlie. Who puts also a journalist, practitioner, lecturer. Charlie. The journalist is the one I yes, because that, that's, that's what, what you that's like. what made me. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And then also Elvis Daku. Please go look for him on Facebook. Elvis Daku. He has some strong views all the time, and he is the editor of the Finder. We review it every morning here.